Hello, my name is Neil Ein from Skyway Software, and this is the first of a two-part series of screencasts on the Spring Webflow capabilities of My Eclipse for Spring. So I'm going to start here with a brand new workspace, and I'm going to go ahead and select New Web Project, and I will call this Project Example Project. I'll select JEE5, and this will create the new web project within my workspace. The next thing that I'm going to do is, in order to use the Webflow capabilities, I need to add Spring Code Generation capabilities to this project. So I right-click, select Spring Code Generation, add Spring Code Generation capabilities. I'm going to disable this option, and I'm going to go ahead and use Class Paths uh, because it'll save me a little bit of time in initializing my project. I'll go ahead and click Finish, and this now configures my project for Spring Code Generation. My project's now a fully configured Spring web application project. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a flow. So before I can create a flow, I need to create a package for it, which is basically a folder where my flows will be located. So I'm going to go ahead and call it org examples.flows. I'll select finish. And then within there, I will create a new flow called my first flow. Select next. Uh, and then I will actually tell it that I want to place it within the web int folder and more specifically within a subfolder in there. So I'll go ahead and select put in flows and hit finish. This pulls up my web flow diagram and from here I'm just going to create a really simple flow. It's going to have two views and I'm going to transition from one view to another. So I'll create the views by dropping these view states onto the canvas. I will call the first view state, we'll call this view 1, and the second one will be view 2. And I will create my transitions by using the transition line, going from here to here, saying next will be the first transition, and then the other transition back will be called appropriately back. I can call these whatever I want, it really doesn't matter. This is really uh, very flexible. Now what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and select save, and when I hit save, since this is my first web flow, uh, the Spring, uh, my Eclipse for Spring is going to go ahead and add the Spring web flow configurations to my project. And if you want to see where those are, those are actually within this config folder, and you can see the Spring web flow configurations in there. I won't go into the details of those files, but suffice it to say that those are the files that you need in order to be able to actually run the Spring web flow. There's also some additional configuration, but that's primarily where the main Spring web flow configurations are. Uh, if I open up my flows folder, where is where I define my uh, flow, uh, you'll notice that there's two JSP pages that were automatically created for me by my Eclipse for Spring. So these JSP pages are what I use to actually implement the individual views. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the first one. And I'm going to implement these by going in here and actually putting in a hyperlink, which uh, uses this special token for calling the web flow itself and I'm going to go ahead and specify the event ID and the event ID is the same name that I used within the diagram itself so this name right here is what matches up to my event ID right here and then I'll save this and then for the second page which is nearly identical for this example I'm going to go ahead and open it up in there in here and I'll just go ahead and paste it but I'm going to change the event ID so instead of next I'm going to use the event ID back and I'll just change the label on here as well and I'll go ahead and hit save. My two JSP pages are now implemented and now I have everything that I need and I can actually run this Spring Webflow project. So I'm going to go up here, right click on the project and select run as my Eclipse server application. Once the application started up, I will at the end of the URL put in my first flow and if everything worked correctly I should see my first view which has the next hyperlink on it and you can see by the toolbar down here that when I highlight that it actually shows me that it's going to go to an event ID called next and I click next it takes me to my second view when I click back it takes me to my back view so as you can see these pages aren't aren't uh, aren't coupled to each other these pages are the 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 flow of these pages is actually controlled by Spring Webflow. Um, it's a very exam simple example, but as you can see, in just a few minutes, we got we started with nothing. We have a fully ready-to-run Spring Webflow application. In the next part of this video, I will actually show how we can tie that Webflow into some of the services that I might have within my application. Thank you.